Hey guys, what's up? Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. Now, you guys thought that Hezekiah was awesome yesterday, which I love Hezekiah. He has gradually become a scripture hero to me as I've studied about him this year. You thought he was cool? Wait till you hear about this guy. This is King Josiah. Now, Josiah is a little more well-known. Uh, there's a great video in the Come Follow Me for this week. I would show you some of it, but uh, it's a little bit longer than what I'd like this episode to be. So watch it on your own. It's wonderful, and it takes you through the story. So I want to take you through the scriptural part of this and show you King Josiah. Now, first of all, you remember how awesome Hezekiah was. He has a son by the name of Manasseh, who is not awesome. Chapter 21, verse 1, Manasseh was 12 years old. Imagine turning stuff over to a deacon, right? He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And what does he do? He starts building up all the altars and the groves and everything that his father did so well to get rid of. He builds it all back up and all of a sudden the people are following him. It, it's so interesting to see the way a leader is, you're going to see the people follow that way. And the kingdom of Judah at that point did that. They started falling back into the old behaviors. Well, Manasseh dies and has a son by the name of Ammon, A-M-O-N, 22 years old when he reigns. And he reigns two years in Jerusalem. He did that which was also evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his father Manasseh did. Now, what's interesting is verse 20. It says the servants of Ammon conspired against him, slew the king in his own house, and then his son Josiah reigned in his stead. Now you go over to chapter 22. Josiah, the ripe old age of eight when he begins to reign. So you thought the deacon was hard. Imagine having the newly baptized eight-year-old leading the kingdom. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I love to see that. Whenever I see that, I make sure I highlight that in my scriptures. When I see someone doing that, which is right. I make sure I highlight it right there. Now, Josiah is a Hebrew name for the Lord saves, which I think this is so cool. Hezekiah was Jehovah is my strength. Josiah is the Lord saves. Yeah, these two guys who are doing their best to fulfill what their names mean. So in verses four through six, uh, you got Josiah who goes up to the temple and tries to build the temple again and repair, it says, the breaches of the house and starts building it again. Verse number eight, there's a high priest there who says, that he has found as they're cleaning up the temple, he's found the book of the law in the house of the Lord, which is the scriptures. That's the books of Moses. So he finds the scriptures, which apparently have been hidden away, which you think about it, if you are an idol worshiper, you're not going to spend much time reading the scriptures. And so these scriptures have been hidden away in the temple and they find them. He goes in and he goes to King Josiah and he's like, hey, we've found the scriptures and they start reading them together. Now, verse 11, it says, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. I think what he's doing is he's hearing these words and he's recognizing all of the ways that they have not been obedient to the Lord. And he just tears his clothes in frustration and in discouragement and sadness and recognizes in verse 13, go ye inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according to all that which was written concerning us. And so he's all of a sudden, he's like, oh no, what have we done? And he's like, we've got to tell the people about this. And what's interesting is you go down to verse 19 where the Lord's response, because thine heart was tender, thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. When thou heardest what I spake against this place and unto the inhabitants thereof, and he says, I also have heard thee. So go out and tell all of these people. And chapter 23 is a great chapter of 2 Kings where it says the king sent, gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem, went up to the house of the Lord, all of the men of Judah. As I'm reading this, I feel much of very like a, a King Benjamin vibe here, bringing everybody to the temple so we can tell them about the goodness of God and tell them about all of these commandments and teach the people and invite them to make a covenant. Covenant. It says he brought people both small and great, read in their ears all of the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. The king stood by a pillar. He made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and their soul, to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. 
and all the people stood to the covenant. Again, to me, this very much has a first few chapters of Mosiah vibe to it, where you've got the king says, do you want to make a covenant with God? And the people are like, we sure do. And what happens is they go out and they start destroying all of the things. Again, just like Hezekiah did, they start tearing down the groves. They start tearing down all of these altars that have been brought back up again by the, the wicked son of Hezekiah. And they, they start tearing these things down. Verse 6, it says, They burn them. They stamp them into a powder. Cast the powder upon the graves of the children of the people by saying, We are not going to do this. A uh, cool little thing in verse 21. It says, And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. And then surely there was not holden such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor the kings of Judah. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was holden to the Lord in Jerusalem. It's like, man, they put together a Passover in a way that it had not been had. The way it had been probably done before, they now were doing it correctly. Well, you go down to verse 25, and what a tribute to Josiah. And like unto him, there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. So King Josiah, and you'll, you'll see in the, the video that they have for this week, he's killed in battle and it shows you the importance of the scriptures in his life. So let me ask you a question here. And this, I think, is something that we all need to think about. At what point in your life did the scriptures start meaning something to you? In what ways also did it lessen idolatry for you? Because again, I really believe that we as humans kind of gravitate to idolatry if we don't focus on the Lord. I think idolatry is kind of our default. It's something that we just go to. So we got to break out of that. So at what point did the scriptures start meaning something to you? That'd be a great little thing to talk about as a family, uh, talk about with your kids or even write in a journal. But at what point did the scriptures start meaning something to you? And then how did that change your relationship with God? Because I really think that's what this story shows is what the scriptures can do for a group of people who are not sure what they should be doing when they find them, they all of a sudden recognize what the right thing is to do, and they turn to the Lord with all of their heart. King Josiah is a hero. King Hezekiah is a hero. And I'm grateful for these two men and what they have shown me about how to turn my heart to the Lord and how he'll help me through the difficult things in my life. I love those principles, and I know they're true. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thank you for sharing. We appreciate that you do that. If you haven't already, go check out our Awesome, amazing, comfortable gospel themed socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.